This is a basic overview of how to create videos with a quadcopter. Here's a nice shot I took along the Wisconsin River at Ferry Bluff in early March. You need to be aware of FAA rules. If you're going to do commercial work, you need to have a license. Two of the major rules are staying below 400 feet and getting permission to fly in Class C airspace, most of which Madison is within due to our proximity to a large airport. Being able to read sectional charts will help you understand where you can and cannot fly. There are a number of resources available to model pilots. A big learning curve to get over is how to handle lithium polymer or LiPo batteries. You need to make sure that you're using a balanced charger, that you never charge over 4.2 volts per cell, and that you don't discharge below 3.2 volts per cell. They do carry the risk of fire, so it's important that you have a case like this to prevent fire damage if you do have a fire. There are a number of different types of multi-rotors available. Some come in kit form, while others are fully assembled. This one is known as a Tiny Whoop. It's a modified inductrix with a board camera on top. This is a Versacopter from Flight Test. It's a 280 size racing quadcopter. This is a tricopter that was designed by David Vindestal, who runs RC Explorer out of Sweden. This was a pretty challenging build, but well worth it. It has a swooshy feel to it when flying that you can't get from a quadcopter. This is an Autel X-Star Premium. Unlike the other multi-rotors, this is an aerial cinematography quadcopter. It flies quite differently than the others, and is what I use to take really nice videos. Here are some more shots from early March. It was a pretty cold and windy day. I had some issues with cold batteries and loss in flight time because of it. There were lots of drone grabbing tree branches everywhere, so I had to be pretty careful on takeoff and landing. Really nice shots typically involve starting out with a close-up and then heading out to a broader landscape. I tried to do that here, but was limited by wind, trees, and other conditions. I tried to do a nice smooth pan across the horizon here. The wind made it difficult to get the shot I wanted, and I'm pretty new to operating this multi-rotor, so I didn't quite get what I was looking for. Here's another type of shot. You can create some interesting effects flying low along the terrain. I wish I was able to get higher on the final part of the shot. I tried to do the close-up to distant landscape transition, but I was low on batteries. These are the stone farmhouse ruins by Indian Lake County Park. Here I did a point of interest autopilot shot. I had the Autel X-Star fly itself around the ruins. A good tip to do before you set up a shot like this is to do a walk all the way around your shot so you know if you have to avoid any obstructions like trees or other obstacles. Winds were gusting to 20 miles an hour, so I'm hoping that the autopilot can do a little smoother job with less wind.
This last shot got a little crazy. I set the center of the point of interest in the wrong spot and ended up getting much too close to the building. Luckily I didn't crash and I think I got some pretty interesting shots. Overall, I think I'm learning quite a bit about making good quality quadcopter videos. One thing to always pay attention to is the rule of threes that photographers always use. Here in the last shot, I got the horizon about in the middle of the frame. It would be better if the camera was tilted down so the sky only covered about one third of the frame. One of the things I need to watch out for is the frequency that I'm using. The X-Star uses 5.8 gigahertz, or many other quadcopters use 2.4 gigahertz. With 5.8, you need to be sure that you maintain a line of sight with your copter. It's fairly susceptible to interference, even with leaves and branches. Another thing to think about is lighting. On this day, the best light was early in the morning. It was great lighting conditions on my way up here, but I was not ready to shoot. Light in the middle of the day tends to be more harsh and direct. The best lighting conditions are early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Another good tip is to fly in a clear area. Shots like the ones by the river were very limited by the trees. That made for much more risky shots. Thank you for watching.